Hello, good morning. Hello. Paul. Good morning, Jose. How are you going? I'm doing good. <coughs> Lovely. Welcome back, Felipe. Dr. Felipe. Hey. Thanks. How are you? <coughs> good. Thank you. And you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. How was your weekend? Mm. Oh, the weekend. Yeah. The weekend is three days ago, but I didn't see you since last week. Yeah. Maybe more longer than that, yeah. Did you do anything special? Did you play football? No. Actually, I can't uh, play football because I'm, uh, of an injury to my knee. Oh, no. I'm yeah. So is it a serious injury? Mm. Is it a really bad injury? It's not so serious, but uh, it could be. Uh, it's a problem with the. Uh, I don't know. Ligament. No, the, uh, I don't know how to translate. Is it the bone or the muscle that's going over the knee, or cartilage? Uh, ah, okay. Um, uh, is it the, the the cap, the kneecap, the front of it. Uh, yeah. Yes. Exactly. The very, the very, the front of the knee. Yeah, the kneecap. Yeah. Ah. Mm. Well, I hope you recover soon. Wish you quick recovery. Yeah, yeah. I also have an, I have a knee problem as well. I've had my knee problem for a long time, for about over two years, and it doesn't seem to go away. It's just there, and it's on my left leg, and this is my favorite leg. I mean, I'm a, I kick the ball with my left. So I'm sort of losing my power. I'm known for yeah. my power kicks. So I know how it feels. It's really, really uh, annoying. Yeah, I know um, it. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's really bad. I need to go and actually see a, a specialist to see what's wrong. Uh, but I hope yours isn't too serious. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Coro. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question, teacher. Yeah. Uh, the format uh, is changed from Colingo from yesterday it, to I today. I think so. Yeah, I think I've, I'm always a, a, a change as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday uh, Google presents uh, some news for uh, Gauss and they uh, applicated uh, those immediately. But they are changes from Google or from Colingo? Google, I think. Uh, no, actually, the, but the uh, format in Colingo is changing. Is changed. We have to I say now we, uh, uh, if we want to go to this class before. Yeah, uh, uh, the the membership and all that is changing. Yes, hmm. is that what you're saying, or are you saying about the the look of the website and all that? Which one do you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, the look and the um, and the membership and the and the fees and everything else. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's it's pretty much changed. Um, mm -hmm. Are you aware of what, what what's happening? I mean, do you know the 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 future fees that are going to be charged? Do you want mm -hmm. me to explain it to you? No. Well. Okay, just I only found out as well. Um, it was an email which was sent to all the teachers of leave yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. So the the it won't be eighty dollars a month anymore. There there are two options. There's going to be two options. Mm -hmm. um, either the basic option, which is fifty dollars a mm -hmm. month, and it, uh, with this option you basically get access to all the classes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you don't have the all the other benef benefits like the one on one mm -hmm. with the teacher, and you know how before it used to be well until now it used to be only fifteen minutes with the, with the teacher, 
Now it's going to be an hour. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a full hour of one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one with your teacher per mm -hmm. week. And that's yeah. actually, if, if you want that and all the mm -hmm. other extras, then you're going to pay $150 mm -hmm. uh, a month. Mm -hmm. So that's 150 and you have unlimited access, uh, obviously, and then you have all the other benefits as well. But this is mm -hmm. the biggest change. You mm -hmm. have that one-on-one -on -one okay. class for one whole hour. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to pay 150 this is a premium. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a second option. And the basic, like I said, is $50. And then mm -hmm. you just have access to all the classes, but you can have any other benefits. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, I didn't, no problems. I don't, I don't know if it's actually showing on the home page of Klingo uh, about new fees, but yeah, but in case you did not, so they, that's that's the um, mm -hmm. right, that's the right. latest. Yeah, okay. and I can see that things look differently as well now. Yeah, they did mention that they got they're gonna be going through some changes. Mm. Yeah, it looks a lot different now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to attend. I have mm, like to see that I want to attend. Sorry? I have to see before I attend a class to see that I want to attend this class. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit more simplified now. So mm. It looks a, mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot more easier on the eye. Mm -hmm. A bit more basic, I think. Yeah. So that's that. So I don't know when your membership expires. Okay. I know that uh, no at the beginning you're supposed to have like a um, half price or something like that. But that I think mm -hmm. is expiring soon. Mm -hmm. Right? So okay, then, no problem. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Um, so what's been happening, guys? Um, Apart from Filippo's uh, injury, I know Jose and Cora only saw you recently. No, no nothing new. <laughs> nothing new? Did you? Uh, was, was Cristiano happy with your, your <laughs> no. dinner? No, he's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, Yes. Oh, I watched my football and uh, yesterday, and Arsenal lost against Chelsea, and I was very sad. Oh. But it's okay. It, it's 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 uh, it was it wasn't that important because it was it was a turn. It was a cup tournament, the English cup tournament. Um, it would have been good if they won because they would have been in the quarterfinals. But uh, still, um, it's okay. They have a lot more important matches coming up. They're playing Liverpool next on Saturday, which and Liverpool are second, I believe, third behind Arsenal in the league table. Then they're playing Dortmund, Borussia Dortmund from Germany in the Champions League. And then they're going to play Manchester United after that, so they have a very busy um, um, few matches, quite a few matches lined up. Um, Jose, who is your favorite team? Um, Actually, I don't like yes. football. Sorry? I don't like football. Oh, yeah. Wow, very well. <laughs> <laughs> Koro can't believe it. Filippo, yeah. <laughs> I think you said you like Inter Milan, yeah? Sorry? Filippo, which which football team do you like? Ah, I like uh, Milan. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is AC Milan, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, AC Milan. Yes, I was close. Actually, it's going uh, very bad. <laughs> I know. I don't know what's going on there. Balotelli is not really like what they expected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Shame. And the other, and I think he, yeah, the other ones as well. And I think Balotelli might might be leaving to Chelsea. There's rumors that he might go to Chelsea. 
his mm-hmm. his uh, agent was saying something that um, he's interested or keen to go to Chelsea. So we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> all right, guys. Um, how about we start? Well, we're going to talk about something interesting. Yeah, hopefully, very beneficial to us, um, uh, to both uh, men and women. How to work out your abs, your abdominal muscles. What's the best workout and exercise? And um, so, before we do that, um, how many sit-ups can you do without? Having to rest. Do you know what a sit up is? Yeah. Or pr- crunch, crunches. Have you ever know. done non stop until you drop dead? <laughs> well, how much do you think you can do? Cora, what do you think? How many I can do? Yeah. 20 after 20 and 20. <laughs> no more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about Ho- uh, Jose? Do you, do you exercise much? Not too much. Maybe 30 around. No more. Um, and Filippo? Uh, I do uh, some crunch sometimes. Uh, I do like a uh, uh, schedule by 30, 30, 30, 30. I five see, so se- series. Yes, so if you're really into it, and you probably do sets, so maybe three sets of 30 or something like that, yeah? Uh, so, no, so three, are, uh, uh, different ch- uh, crunch, uh, five different crunch in serial. I uh, see. Just one series uh, for, uh, for each. Uh, so you would do different, different types of uh, ab exercises. Exactly. Maybe one is uh, you know, crunch, the other one might be holding your legs up, Doing the bicycle in the air and all that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I see. Good, 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 good. All right. Well, actually, our grammar focus is um, plurals, okay, and quantifiers. Plurals and quantifiers. Um, Do we know what quantifiers are? Sorry? What what's a quantifier? Can you tell me what a quantifier is? Uh, a word that says how many things describes. Good. So basically, many, yeah. Or many how much? Good. How much? Yes. Mm-hmm. And is there another one? Mm. I don't know. There's another one you can use um, for both. Uh, it consists of more than one word. So we have many, then we have much. A lot of. Uh, yes. Well uh-huh, done, okay. A lot of. Yeah. A lot of. Excellent. So we're going to talk about the differences, yeah, and when to use them, uh, and what are the rulings uh, of of these three. And um, yeah, before we do that, there's one one small pronunciation skill which we need to uh, briefly mention, and I think you guys are okay with it anyway. So the difference between um, the vowels in many. Or any, and much, or some. Okay. So basically, let's see. Uh, in many and any, okay, we use the a sound, a like many, yeah. And in much and some, we use the a sound, much. You may have heard some students say much. Because of the you, because maybe in their native tongue, uh, the native language, they say they pronounce it that way, but that's actually incorrect. Uh, so you need to pronounce it much as an R. 
and sun also. You may have even heard actually native speakers say much. How much? <laughs> it's actually in England, um, like like I mentioned once before, there are different in dialects, different um, accents in England. And what dialect uh, speak uh, like this? Sorry, which dialect? Uh, say much. Yeah, which one? Yeah. Who says who says it like that? Which uh, which yeah. dialect? I don't know. <laughs> Are you asking me? Yeah. yeah I, I think um, uh, probably in the, in uh, Scotland, the Scottish, they might pronounce it like that. How much? How much? Yeah. Rather than how much. And um, and other parts. I'm not too sure exactly which ones now, but I think north, north of the UK, uh, like Scotland, that area. And well, I'm not too sure. But there are various ones. There's Newcastle. There's Liverpool. Uh, they might they might you know say it's slightly different. And then you have you have some Londoners also from London area. They also speak uh, quite with a strong accent. Uh, so if you hear that, you know it's it's common. You might hear it, but the general way of pronouncing is is much and some, and many and any. Yeah. Okay. So let's quickly read. Uh, I'm gonna let you read some sentences so you can grasp it hopefully. And uh, so let's see the first one. Uh, Koro, can you read the first one, please? Koro, are you there? Sorry, it was muted. Uh, oh. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know many people who like reggae music. Music. Good. Excellent. Uh, Jose. Um, I don't know. I don't know many people who like reggae music. Good. And Filippo? I don't know many people um, who like reggae music. Yeah. So I don't like. I don't know many people who like reggae music. Excellent. So here we have many. Next sentence, Filippo. Do you want to start? Uh, she doesn't have any car insurance. Nice. Jose? He doesn't have any car insurance. Okay. Yes, that's good. And Coro? She doesn't have any car insurance. Nice, nice. Okay, Coro, next one for you. Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Mm. See here when you say uh, money, some money, they have the same vowel. The first vowel is the same. I thought I heard you say money. Okay. So you, you say money. So Joe was hoping to win some money, money. at bingo. Yeah. At bingo. Thank Excellent. You. Good. That's good. Jose. Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Nice. Okay. Filippo. Joe was hoping to win some money at bingo. Nice. Good. Okay. Last one. How much does this cost? Yes. Jose? How much does this cost? Yes, good. And Koro? So one moment. How much does this cost? How much yes, does nice. Does this cost? Does this yep. cost? So, how much does this cost? Does this cost? <laughs> It's pretty difficult <laughs> to to read. What's difficult? The last one? Yeah. Uh, the pronunciation or uh, how much does this cost? Yeah. Which which word it exactly? Does, uh, <laughs> no, it's nothing. Uh, uh, does this? Yeah. 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 Does this? Yeah. Does this? Yeah. There's a cluster, a uh, consonant cluster. So how much does this cost? It's almost like a tongue twister. How much does this cost? Does this? You know, uh, if you were a native, probably would wouldn't necessarily say this here because of the z before that. So you'd almost say, how much does this cost? Or does this cost? 
unless um, you want to slow it down and pause almost, then you would say, how much does this cost? And then you can hear it properly. But if you were to hear a native, uh, native speaker speak it fast, how much does this cost? You see, it's like, is this, does this cost? You don't, you don't hear them say, does this, does this, because it's very difficult. So it's not only difficult for you as a learner, it's difficult for natives as well. So this is why sometimes they don't even pronounce that. The. Unless they are speaking slowly, and then you can, you can tell they are actually pronouncing the letters properly. Um, all right, so that's that, guys. So we've covered that. Uh, I'm happy with your pronunciations. So now we're going to get into the detail of these quantifiers and some of the rules. So let's have a look. So, <clears throat> so it's good to learn uh, irregular plurals. Okay, there are some nouns that you don't add the s or es to pluralize. Those are called irregular. But for example, man becomes men, woman becomes women, person people, child children. So these are complete irregular cases. And then we have some uh, different ones where, that, where we have groups. Okay, so double O in singular will become a double E in plural. So tooth, teeth. One tooth, two teeth. One foot, two feet. One goose, two geese. All right, and then another group would be the F in singular will become VES in plural. So one life and two, Filippo? Uh, lives. Mm. Lives. Lives, excellent. Yeah, it, I mean, there are two ways of pronouncing it, but in this case, if it's a plural of life, it's always going to be lives. If you say lives, lives, it's like a, uh, it's a verb, yeah? He lives with his mom, for example, yeah? And it's a uh, different, uh, uh, yeah, and there's a um, uh, right, right different. It's like, uh, live like this. Oh, oh no, that that's leave. Okay. That's leave. Good you mentioned it. See, this way of lives, this one here, lives and lives. They are pronounced the same way. But depending on the context, like in this case, if it's plural noun. You will say lives. One life, two lives. Okay. If you want to say that that uh, Filippo li lives with his mom at home, right? Mm -hmm. You you live with your mom. He lives with his mom. Then that's a verb. He lives. But if you're saying the one that you typed, L E A V E, that's leave. You have to prolong that vowel now. Leave, not live. There's a difference, yeah. Okay. So leave means you're you're leaving, you're going away. That's totally different meaning, okay? Okay. Good. And then uh, Jose, we have one wife and two wives. Excellent wives. And Coro, one knife, two knives. Knives. Excellent. And make sure that the, it, it's a proper V, yeah? And it's not, um, some students might say knives. I pronounce it with an F, which is incorrect. It has to be knive, knives, yeah? Wives, lives, and so on. And then we have another group where there's actually no change. It remains the same. So one deer, two deer, one sheep, two sheep. 
one fish, two fish. Okay, some might say fishes, two fishes, uh, which is also acceptable, but it's more common to keep it the same. So one fish, two fish. Uh, secondly, this is where we get into the many, much, and a lot of. So when do we use them? Now pay attention. Many is for countable nouns. Can you think of a countable noun? Who can give me one? Mm -hmm. Coin? Bottle. Sorry? Uh, bottle. Bottle, yes, yes. One bottle, two bottles, excellent. So these are countable nouns. So you would use many for that. How many bottles do you have? Oh, I've got three bottles. And so on. Okay, much is for non countable nouns. What's a non countable noun? Can you give me an example? Uh, rice. Yes. Excellent. Water, rice. Mm. Excellent, yes. So a man which is which you can't count, it's not countable. Like rice. How much rice would you like? Mm. And a lot of. And a lot of basically we can use for both. For countable and non-countable nouns. So if you're stuck sometimes and you're not sure whether the, the noun is countable or non-countable, you can use a lot of instead like an easy way out. So, let's look at some examples. There are many cars, countable. So many houses, countable. Too many people, yeah. Then we have too much water, too much ice, so much food. And don't say there is much water or there is much ice. Okay, you can't really say that. So you should add two or so in this case. Uh, or there are a lot of cars and a lot of water. It's uncountable, non-countable. And you can use a lot of in both cases. And note here that too many or too much is for problems. right? And so much and a lot of are casual ways to say very. So thirdly, you can use some and any. So these words both mean an unstated small number. How we use them is different though. Okay, uh, Some is usually used when the feeling is positive or neutral. So I caught some fish today. Yes, happy days. I'm going to have dinner. I had some good luck. So you're not, you're not going to say I had any good luck or I caught any fish today. Now here it has to be some because it's a positive sentence or it's neutral. Um, any is usually used in negative sentences. So I didn't catch any fish. I didn't. It's a negative here. Have you seen any good movies lately? Also, in questions, you can use any. And especially if it's a uh, polite request, yeah, to make it sound less strong. So, for example, can I get you anything? Anything rather than something, yeah? So, can I get you anything? Would you like any milk with your tea? Any milk? Right? And finally, um, we can pluralize some non-countable nouns. So coffee uh, actually is non-countable. But um, that, that it's an exception. So we can say two coffees. For example, if you're in a restaurant, you can say, uh, can I have two coffees, please? There's an exception for that. Which means uh, you want two cups of coffee. Yeah, but you can also ask, "Can I can I have two cups of coffee, uh, coffee please?" And um, 
pluralized non-countable nouns to describe totally different types of them. Okay, so when, you when you're describing different types, like juice, metals, yeah. So, for example, uh, smoking can cause harm versus the many harms of smoking. Yeah. Harm usually is, is actually non countable, but in this case, you can pluralize it and add many. Because you're talking about different types, yeah, different types of harm. So there are many harms uh, of smoking. Two pieces of candy, right? So you can say the store has a number of different candies. See what's pluralized, yeah. And then uh, three kinds of plastic. You could say the company makes a thousand different plastics. Plastics. Yeah, usually it would be uh, not countable. And finally, note that most non countable nouns are never pluralized. So most of them, you never pluralize them, apart from some of these exceptions. So information always stays information. You never make it information. Equipment always stays equipment. Don't add an S or anything. I have two equipments. No, no, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and jewelry also stays like that. OK, are you guys OK? Any questions? No. OK, bravo. All right, then let's. let's Let's do some ab workouts. You ready? Zumba. Zumba. <laughs> is it Zumba. What's it called? That that dancing thing that you. you I do make before? Zumba all the days. I am addicted to Zumba. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you do it on a daily basis, every day, do you? Yes. I connected wow. my computer with the TV, and I make uh, Zumba. Awesome, awesome. That's good. When you have it at home. Um, it's the best. You don't have to go anywhere. Mm. Just, just that to Zumba. It's so popular. It's everywhere now. Yes, it's, it's wonderful. Is it in Spanish? Do they have it in Spanish as well? Uh, no, the best Zumba classes are from USA or so. Ah, from see, Latinos from USA. In YouTube, you can say a lot of this. Ah, OK. Excellent. Well, so now we're going to focus on uh, the best ab workout ever. I mean, we have a male figure here, but females can do it as well. So don't be um, turned off by any any means, Carl. Um, <laughs> so you understand what ab means, yeah? Ab. Mm -hmm. Ab is short for abdominal muscle. Ah, okay. Abdominal. Abdo abdo abdominal. Yes. Or abdomen. abdomen. This mm -hmm. is this area, your stomach area, your stomach muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and workout is um, an exercise, like exercise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is what Al Alvin uh, Costro had to say. By the way, I put a link in the chat if you want to open it yourselves um, to make it larger. So if it weren't for dead guys, we'd probably never have started doing crunches or sit-ups or just about any other conventional ab exercise. That's because for years, much of our knowledge of the way uh, midsection and other muscles work was based on the study of human cadavers. By looking at the anatomy of corpses, modern scientists figured that the function of your abdominals, particularly the rectus abdominis, or six pack muscle, six pack is basically one, two, three, four, five, six is a six pack. Um, must be to flex your spine, which is exactly what you do when you perform a crunch or a sit-up or any other movement that requires you to round your lower back. But despite the popularity of these exercises, they simply aren't among the most effective movements for building a rock-solid core. You see, your abdominal muscles have a more important function than flexing your spine. Their main job is to stabilize it. 
In fact, these muscles are the reason your torso stays upright instead of falling forward due to gravity. So in stabilizing your spine, your abs actually prevent it from flexing while you're standing, walking, and running. Here, here's my point. If you want better results from your core workout, you need to use a routine that trains your abs the way they're designed to function. That's not to say the classic crunch doesn't work. It does. But the future of ab training is all about stabilization. And guess what? The future is here. So this is what we have to do if we want to get great abs. So your hardcore training plan. Fair warning. This workout may not feel like your usual ab routine because the exercises focus on spinal st stabilization instead of spinal flexion, uh, flexion. They don't create the same type of abdominal muscle soreness that you might have felt from traditional core moves. Uh, moving a muscle against a force causes more muscle damage than resisting movement does. But that doesn't mean they're not working. In fact, since I began using this method in my gym, my clients are seeing faster progress than ever. So don't worry, not only will this workout make your core strong and stable, it's all, it'll, it'll also make your ab muscles pop. The level one workout is the easiest and a good place for beginners to start. The level two and level three workouts are pro progressively more challenging. For the best results, do the workout that best uh, matches your fitness uh, level twice a week. So these are the three different levels. So what they're saying here is they're using this uh, spine stabilization method rather than the spinal um, flexion. So basically the hardest one would be to, to form a push-up position like you were, you were going to do a push-up, and you just hold it like that for perhaps 30 seconds. And you have to tense your abs, tense your stomach, right, for those 30 seconds, and then you rest. And then you probably do another set of 30 seconds. Right, or if you can do more, do more. And the easiest would be level one, where you sort of go down on your elbows. All right. So let's say I don't know. You can click on e either one of them. So let's say we choose the third one. Then it'll tell you some more details on how to do it properly and what to follow. So perform the exercises in the order shown using the prescribed sets, reps, and yeah, sets. For the Swiss ball jackknife, uh, pause for two seconds each time you pull your knees forward, your chest. Uh, the Swiss ball is this one here. But if you don't have a Swiss ball, that's fine. Um, so you can just do this instead. Okay, I'm sure you have a lot of questions about the vocabulary. <laughs> Any words you didn't understand? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the exercise to when Swiss wall, I understand. Uh, I understand, but what means jackknife or something? So? Jackknife. It's just um, basically you see his position here on the on the mm -hmm. Swiss wall. What he's going to do now, he's going to do an uh, a movement, mm -hmm. right, where his his backside or his butt will go up in the air. Mm -hmm. and his feet will come forward. So basically that looks like a jackknife, a knife that you can close and open. Okay. You, know, you have one of those small knives you can open and close? Mm -hmm. I believe that's a jackknife. So it looked like that. So when he's now uh, doing these repetitions with the reps, his, his butt will go up and his feet will come forward. Like he's bending his body in a pyramid shape. You understand? It would be like a pyramid mm -hmm. shape. <laughs> so that movement will make it look like a jackknife. So they're using that example, jackknife as in 
at the opening and closing of knife. Uh, and Swiss ball is this blue Swiss ball, that's what they call it. Okay. Um, any other uh, words from the actual text? Leave. <laughs> Sorry, which one? Uh, oh, oh, that's yeah, that's a misspelling. It should be level. Oh, yeah, it should be level. The last bit. Yeah. 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 So the best matches your fitness level uh, twice a week. Anything else? Mm. Mm -hmm. What about the beginning? You know what this means. Um, if it weren't for the guys, we'd probably never have them. What this word cadavers? Yeah, cadaver. Do you know yeah, what it's dead people? Yeah, dead people. It's a corpse. Same as this. Yes, a corpse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a corpse. Escalate. No, uh, no, dead, no. <laughs> a, yeah, a dead body. So what mm -hmm. they're trying to say here is that um, because uh, for years much of our knowledge of the way midsection and other muscles work was based on the study of human corpses. So when the, the scientists and, and, and doctors were, you know, cutting dead people apart to find out the anatomy and to find out the muscle uh, placement and all that, that's how they found out the, the actual function of these uh, muscles, the rectus abdominis, you know, and our stomach muscles. Um, yeah. All right, nothing else? All right then, so let's do some questions then. Okie dokie. All right. So what's the best way to work out your abs? What do you think? To, um, to training, no? I think. Yeah. The best way to work out the abs is to training. To train just general training? No, to training with the exercises, with these exercises. Making these exercises. Yes, yes. And try to use uh, some of our yeah, grammar skill, so the quantifiers. So try to use many, much, a lot the of. The best um, way to work out your apps is making some on some on the any exercise any, any training training exercises mm -hmm. can you say um, so if you wanted to use let's say um, types types of exercises. Would you say many or much or a lot of? You know, types. Many types, no? Yeah, many types. Is that is that countable? <laughs> we have one type, we have two types, yeah? So it's countable, so we say many. So the best way is to, to do many types of um, Ab exercises. Here they're saying this is the best, but you can alternate like Filippo does. You know, he does five different ones, and that's also good because it trains uh, pretty much gives your your muscle muscles your muscle memory. It, it develops it, and you're not always doing that one exercise over and over again. It's important to sort of you know mix it up a little bit. Good. Uh, now, would you agree that people make mistakes when working out their abs?
do you agree that people make mistakes when they do some of these exercises? Yeah. Sometimes, yes. <coughs> because uh, they could uh, um, do it uh, in the way, in the wrong way, mm -hmm. and uh, make uh, some damage to the uh, dorsal, uh, uh, to the spine. Yes. They're gonna do some damage to the spine, um, you know, they might hurt yeah. some other muscles, yeah. So that's very good, yeah. You have to uh, know exactly how to do it properly. And you know, you need to know what you want to achieve by that exercise. If you are not aware of it, you might be doing something for months, for months, maybe for years. And by the time you know it, uh, your posture will change. You know, your posture, the way you stand. Yeah. Uh, it will totally change. And you, know, you might have a hump back. You know, you might slouch a little bit. You know, you, you won't have a straight back. So it's very important that you do it properly. And uh, you know, sometimes you see people at the gym, they're really pushing themselves. But they never had any guidance or any um, advice. So they think they're doing it correctly, but they're actually doing it the wrong way. So it's very important. There are many mistakes, yeah, which people make. Especially if they are new or they're beginners. <clears throat> yeah. OK, now. What about your diet? What do you need to eat to get the great, uh, the greatest abs, or to get great abs? Mm. Mm, proteins and mm -hmm. mm. so okay. Use use a quantifier. What would you say before? Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, To get great abs, I mm -hmm. uh, have to eat some proteins. Mm -hmm. Or much some protein. No, some is okay. I, you actually, um, you could say a lot of in this case. A, a lot, lot of proteins. proteins. Yeah. Um, you can say a lot of protein supplements or food has a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's also things which you shouldn't eat. Yeah, the, you can also turn the question around and say, um, what food shouldn't you eat to, to have great ass? Because there's a lot of food which actually it's not good. You'll gain to your belly. You'll gain jelly to your belly. So what do you think? Like kind sweet. Of yes. Sorry. Um, sweet. Uh, sweets. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Sweet stuff. For Halloween yeah. is a, a problem. Yes. Well, not necessarily for women only. It's oh, some men as well. I mean, I like sweets, and but the thing is, yeah, we have a different um, metabolism, and I guess men can take in more calories than women. Yes, so it's not like different today. But yeah, so sweets is one thing. What else? Mm. Alcohol, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So all these sweets, alcohol, what, what um, quantifier would you use? Uh. You can make it negative as well if you like. In this case, might maybe negative would be suitable. So, um, so don't. A lot of. Uh, yeah. A lot of sweets. Yeah, don't eat a lot of sweets. Or. Uh, or don't eat um, any sweets. Any sweets. Yeah. Don't Try drink yeah. any alcohol. Good. Is, yeah, that's it. Jose, do you think? Can you think of anything else not to take? Mm. Have a good diet. And have great Don't abs. Be too much fat. Mm. Don't eat too much fatty food. Yes. 
Yes, because there are a lot of different foods which have a lot of fat inside. Mm. Not only that, even sugar. Yes. I mean, not, not raw sugar. I mean, of, of course, stay away from sugar itself. But there are other like, cakes and all that, which other foods which have a lot of sugar inside. So you should also keep that um, under your eye. Keep it under control. Excellent. That's good. All right. There's quite a few we can mention still, but I think that's good for now. So, so feel free to go through the website, and um, there's quite a few beneficial things. If you just click on a picture, it tells you, um, gives you more details and how to work out. And even down here, it's got other beneficial stuff maybe for for the health. So okay. So now let's quickly do some more practice or assessment rather. So I'll, I'll give you a word. Let's start with Koro. Okay, I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a word and you just make it um, plural for me. Okay. okay. So, man. Man. <laughs> yes. Um, Sheep. Sorry. Sheep. Mm -hmm. This <laughs> I don't. I've spelt it for you. Sheep, sheep. I think it's the same, no? Yes, yes. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and okay, can you give me a sentence using books? Books and use a quantifier to go with books. Uh. In my house, I have a lot of books. Uh, yes, yeah. okay. That's good, yeah. Uh -huh. um, you could also say many, yeah? Many. <laughs> there are many books in my house. Uh -huh. books, books is, is it countable or not countable? Countable. Yeah. One book, two books, and so on. Excellent. Thank you very much, Koro. Yeah. Jose? Um, Yes. Deer. deer. Another animal. The same. Deer. Deer. Excellent. Good. Stays the same. Um, okay. Can you? Well, let's see. What else we have? Okay. Can you give me a sentence using oil? Oil and use a quantifier to go back. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Do you know a place where I can get some oil? Yes, good. Good question. Excellent. I'm happy with that. Do you know a place where I can get some oil? Yeah. Maybe you want some vegetable oil, cooking oil. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jose. And Filippo. Yeah. Um, okay. Yours is cat. What's uh, the color of cat? Cats. Yeah, easy that one. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, make a sentence. Using mm -hmm. fruit. Can you fruit. type it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fruit. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And use it. Today, uh, I go. Uh, um, to buy uh, a lot of food. Good. Yes. Excellent. Or some food. I'm going to buy some food. Yeah? Huh. Well done. Oh, I'm going to buy a lot of food today. I feel like eating food. That's but, good. Uh, fruit is not countable. Excellent. Yes. Uh, you know, 
You know how we had in the grammar, we, we spoke about uh, candy, and you can say uh, there are different ty uh, types of candy, and uh, you can make it plural. Okay. So this is one of the non-countable ones. You can make plural. So you can say, for example, um, you must eat many different fruits, okay, and vegetables every day. Because there are different types of fruit, yeah. So you can say uh, different fruits. I'm gonna buy different fruits today. Many different fruits, yeah. So this is one of the non-countable where you can pluralize it. You can add an s to it if you like. All right. Uh, especially if you're talking about different types and all that. All right, guys. Well done. I'm happy with that. Any questions? Everything was clear, I believe. Yeah. No, it's okay. Lovely, lovely. Okay, guys, you've done very well. Um, congratulations. And um, if I don't see you in the next class, I'll see you when I'm looking at you. Okay, guys, so have a, lo have a lovely day. Thank and you. I'll see you soon. Okay, okay. thank you, teacher. No Bye. problems. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.